afternoon and welcome to the studio here at Distributech. This afternoon we're joined by Tony Field, who is the chairman of the DLMS Association, Ed Beriset, who is a principal technical leader for AMI Research at EPRI, and Larry Colton, who is one of the directors at DLMS. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Now, consultation is uh, very important in the development of any project. Why is it so important, uh, especially when choosing data exchange protocols? Yes. Well, normally these projects are very, very large. They have a lot of moving parts. And consultation is very important to ensure that all the stakeholders know their position in the project. They know uh, what they're doing and how all the various parts of the project can interface with one another. And particularly from a uh, position of protocol standards, it's very important to have a good organization that backs up the standard that you're using, a good support network, and a good network of consultants and um, certification houses who can ensure that whatever it is that you're designing is interoperable. Ed, from your perspective? Well, I'd say pretty much the same thing. Uh, perhaps a succinct way of expressing that idea is that it's important to do because it's expensive if you don't do it, essentially. So the, uh, the idea of having interoperable devices that can actually speak to each other, uh, very important. Yeah. Larry? And, and I would say it's important for all stakeholders. As a, a member of DLMS uh, User Association and a director there, um, I can say firsthand I've seen that process in place, the collaboration of a collective group coming together and all sharing their, their uh, values. Um, their needs and it ends up being a better result because of all the input from, from the different groups. Now, um, Ed, you mentioned interoperability. So my, my question to all of you is, is interoperability is a concept that is often um, brought to the table, but it's really hard to achieve. Why? Why is this such a difficult concept? Uh, and I'll start with you and then we can move on to Tony. <laughs> sure. So one reason it's very difficult to do is that uh, it's very simple to do interoperability for simple things. So paper clips are very easy to make interoperable. Um, avionics controls for fighter aircraft are a lot more complicated and a lot harder to do. So with the smart grid in general and in meters in particular, those are probably somewhere in between in terms of complexity. And I think there's also... Uh, as, as an engineer, I can confess, there's always a tendency to want to invent something better. Okay. And uh, <laughs> that isn't necessarily in the service of doing it interoperably. Tony, from your perspective, working with these standards? I'd completely agree. It's very, very difficult to do from a practical perspective um, and technically. And generally, you want to start off with a common language as the first particular point when I'm talking about data protocols specifically. Um, then you need to make sure that the common language supports a common vocabulary so that the two parties talking to one another have the same idea of words, the same knowledge of the words and the same knowledge of expressions and functions and services. Um, you also need a good organization to make sure you can certify that to prove that one device supports the same functionality as the other device um, and someone else to kind of organize all of those bits hanging together in the middle. Okay, so definitely a complicated process. Of course, it's complicated, but it is doable, but it's not easy. Larry, have you got anything that you'd like to add to that? Well, I, I think part of it is to is making sure that, that all vendors are on the same page and you know, know kind of how to, how to design things to make sure it's interoperable. And that's the importance of utilizing public open standards. And that sets out the blueprint, defines things. To, to ensure interoperability. Okay. Ed, a question for you. From a utility perspective, why is device interoperability um, implementation in, and interchangeability so important? Well, there are a whole host of reasons. Uh, probably the primary one boils down to one of cost. Uh, for uh, a utility to deploy millions of meters is obviously not an inexpensive proposition. Mm. And so for that purchase to be solely sourced to a single vendor with a proprietary solution can tend to be more expensive than if it's an interoperable standard that multiple vendors could conceivably support. Uh, there's still uh, quite, quite a bit of interest 
in having devices that not only work well, but also speak to each other and through each other. And that's where I think the DLMS Users Association and the DLMS standard uh, particularly helpful. Speaking of DLMS, um, Tony, what updates and enhancements are planned for the DLMS COSIM standard and what is this going to mean for the sector? Sure. I mean, the organization is continually updating the standard, so there's always something in the pipeline. The latest raft of updates that we're looking at at the moment is an update to one on YSUN. So there's a profile so DLMS COSIM can operate on the YSUN um, network. Uh, also, we're looking at doing an LP1 profile, so ensuring efficiency of the protocol so it can run over narrow bandwidth communication technologies. We have some new security updates and um, a general improvement um, for the support of gas and water and heat um, devices. Uh, so, of course, all of this stuff all looks to increase the reach and the adoption of DLMS COSEM, proving that we can operate un over any lower layers that anyone decides to bring to market and any one new technology that comes along. Um, we can operate seamlessly across all of those technologies, which is obviously an advantage for the standard. And the efficiency improvements don't just benefit the individual technologies that we're running across, they of course benefit other technologies which are always in this market looking to be more efficient. And when are these likely to be rolled out and available? So there's a new uh, set of the books coming out uh, early part of this year, and then the development for some of the other features will be coming along throughout 2019. Okay. Ed, last question for you, and that is, what is what do US utilities look for in communication standards? And specifically, what is EPRI doing in this field? That's a good question, Claire. Uh, I think the primary thing, again, if I'll go back to the cost issue, is that uh, utilities are very cost sensitive. Um, now, having a proprietary uh, protocol versus an open source protocol doesn't generally confer a difference in cost, but the cost is not the purchase, it's the subsequent operation of it, troubleshooting, training, and ultimately replacement with something mm. newer some years up, down the road. What uh, EPRI is doing is we are a nonprofit research organization. So we don't buy any meters, we don't design any meters, we don't sell any meters, uh, but we do speak to a lot of utilities about what their needs are. And top of the list of their needs are actual, real, demonstrable, demonstrated, certified interoperability. And so one of the things that EPRI has done lately is uh, we have been uh, participating in the DLMS Users Association. Uh, we've also just recently uh, implemented and released an open source version of the stack. There are some uh, versions of this uh, communications protocol stack that are already available, uh, but we found that most of those tended to be geared toward uh, the computer end of things, the, the, the head end system, and not so much the embedded system. So we deliberately targeted uh, running this software that implements the entire DLMS stack on uh, an ARM M3, which is a relatively low-end microprocessor of the type that you'd actually see in a meter today. So okay. it, it, it was a demonstration project to show not only that it can be done, but how it can be done. Before we end off, uh, any last, last thoughts? Larry, I'll start with you. <laughs> um, I, I guess the importance of interoperability, interchangeability, um, is important for, for all stakeholders, um, especially utilities, because it, it reduces risk for them. Uh, these smart grid, smart metering projects are very large scale, and there's a lot of risk inherent to the, to the project itself. So by using interoperable standards, it can help reduce that risk. It helps also reduce the overall cost over the lifetime of the project. And of course, utilities are risk averse because of their mandate. Yes. Absolutely. Ed? Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to strongly echo the fact that these devices tend to be deployed in the millions and they tend to be out there for tens of years in many cases. And for that reason, choosing carefully before deployment is pretty vital. Um, for that reason as well, EPRI's been involved in a lot of these activities to try to make sure that the interoperability doesn't get consigned solely to the brochure for the manufacturer, but we help assure that that's real interoperability, that devices really can talk to each other in the field as well as in the lab. Okay, Tony, last word from you. Yeah, I agree with all of that stuff that those guys <laughs> have just said. Um, and particularly one of the reasons that 
DLMS COSIM has been so popular and it's been so well supported is because of that security of investment. All of the people that implement the technology want the security of investment. We've been around for 20 years already and we continue to evolve as new technology comes along, um, which makes it a very, very powerful standard. And not only just from a technological perspective, but from a geographical reach as well. This is our first Distributec ever. So it was a bit daunting stepping our first toe into the, into the US market, but we've had a really, really good reception from the people that have come to visit us um, right the way from the industry, um, from sort of distribution network owners, device vendors, um, people from the government and the Department of Energy have come and spoken to us as well. It's been absolutely fantastic to have that opportunity to engage with people in, in new geographies to talk about the stuff that we're doing in terms of interoperability. Well, it's wonderful and I hope that you'll continue to have an amazing show. Thank you so much, all of you, for taking the time to come and speak with us this afternoon. From Distributech, thanks so much for joining us.